Thank you. So Sarah is a VT prevention specialist nurse at the Oxford University Hospitals NHS Foundation Trust. She has passion in innovation, sustainability and teaching. She has an active role in engaging and supporting others within the Thrombosis Network. Thank you, Sarah. Over to you. and good morning and thank you for giving me this opportunity to share with you the process of developing a staff educational video and I am a VT prevention nurse at Oxford University Hospitals and it's a great pleasure to introduce you to the fabulous work that we've done in Oxford. So to give you some background Oxford University Hospitals has four separate sites with around 1,200 inpatient beds. And we have around uh, 13,000 members of staff, so we're huge. And the trust is part of the VT Exemplar Network and we're committed to reducing the risk of, risk of hospital associated thrombosis for all patients. And we have clear guidance for clinicians with a particular focus on education and training. And if you've ever thought about developing a video or wondered how a video is created, you are definitely in the right place. The VT prevention team previously provided a comprehensive face-to-face -face teaching programme to all new starters and existing members of staff. And due to the restrictions put in place by the trust due to COVID-19, this prevented the delivery of face-to-face -face teaching. The trust felt that teaching was a priority and as a result, teaching was switched to Microsoft Teams. And at the same time to complement this, we came up with the idea of developing our own staff educational video on preventing BTE, diagnosis and treatment of BTE. And the picture there on the screen, that, that just shows you what teaching used to look like. However, having no experience in developing a video, it was very daunting not knowing where to start. Therefore, Oxford Medical Illustrations, OMI, was contacted, which in fact was extremely helpful in pointing me and the team in the right direction. They then provided me with video examples, which can be seen on the screen. We wanted to produce a video that would be high quality, catch our audience, be user friendly and deliver key messages to our staff. And following discussions with OMI, we were surprised by the cost of producing a video. And as a team, we agreed to produce the most expensive video, in fact, because we wanted that quality. And we chose a whiteboard style with the next hurdle of how are we going to secure funding for this video? We were then given a provisional cost of £10,000 to produce this video. And that was due to it lasting 15 minutes long. So we approached Cardinal Health and Pfizer, who we use within the trust, informally initially, to see if there was a possibility for them to fund the project. We were then asked to submit a formal business case, which was approved by both companies. The funding was secured, but we had no idea how to receive the funds, as we didn't want this going into our, our own unit budget. We then made contact with the finance team within the trust, who set up a specific account for us for the money to be paid into. And as shown on the screen, these were all the key stakeholders we had contact with when developing the video. And that was from the legal team to the patients. And it would not have been successful without all these key stakeholders listed. And as you can see, there are many direct and indirect stakeholders involved in the process. However, this was just not plain sailing. And there were many barriers involved. In hindsight, it may have been better to have fewer people involved in the early stages of the process, especially when developing the script. 
This led to several opinions and views, which was a challenge in managing the expectations and keeping people happy that were involved. We appreciated everyone's input, though, and their expertise, of course. But however, individuals did change their minds multiple times and deadlines were just not appreciated. And once the script, voiceover and the animation artwork was approved, any changes actually incurred an additional financial cost and the time. It was important to recognise we were producing this video during a challenging time though. We were in the peak of COVID, therefore the production time took longer than expected due to other urgent healthcare commitments and constraints. But we are incredibly grateful to our sponsors, Pfizer and Cardinal Health, as without the funding from them, the video would not have been produced. And to my knowledge, I'm not actually aware of any national funding for VT prevention education. As you can see, the idea of developing a video was in July 2020. And it took one month to apply for funding, which was approved six months later. While waiting for the funding, the video script was developed and agreed in April 21. The funds were received in June 2021 and in November 2021, the voiceover was approved. And six months from that point, the animation artwork was developed. And finally, the video was published in May 2022 this year. So it took 22 months in total to get a finished live product. Not in a million years would I have thought it would have taken that long, but that was just my naivety. And I just didn't expect to encounter all the barriers mentioned previously along the way. And having gone through this process myself on reflection, I should have ensured at the start of the product that stakeholders were aware of the expectations and the role of myself as the video director. This may have then eased some of the barriers that were faced. So what next for the video? So we would like to adapt the video in order to use in our outpatient waiting area and then be available trust-wide. So rather than it being a staff educational video, let's use some of it for patients now. And we we'll regularly review to ensure the content is still in line with current practice, of course, and to continue to promote the video with an aim to reduce hospital associated thrombosis and to ensure the delivery of safe practice. If you're going to develop a video, you need to be invested and have the time and resource to make it happen. As you can see, I was involved with 701 emails. I held 13 virtual meetings, went through 27 drafts, spending a total of 120 hours on the product. And that's just me alone, not everyone else's time. So it's a lot invested in this video. The circus act in the middle there represents how I felt at times. It really was a balancing act doing this along with my job. Uh, but it really was worth it and I would do it again and that's due to the positive feedback from the staff and we've learned to get a lot together as a team. I'm now going to show you the video um, and you can actually access this from the Thrombosis UK website under the training and resource tab. I'm just going to show you a snapshot because I'm conscious of time. Oxford University Hospitals Foundation Trust provides leadership and excellence in thrombosis care. The Trust is part of an exemplar network committed to reducing hospital-associated venous thromboembolism, VTE. What can we do to prevent a VTE occurring in a patient? Actually, there are a number of things we can do to reduce the risk of a patient developing a VTE. What happens if a patient develops a VTE? How do we make a diagnosis and what are the best treatment options available to us?
everyone who is admitted to hospital is at risk of developing a VTE, which can cause serious illness or death. VTE is a collective term for deep vein thrombosis, DVT, and pulmonary embolism, PE. VTE is a serious healthcare problem affecting approximately one in every 1,000 of the UK population. Over 10% of hospital deaths are related to PE. A DVT occurs when a blood clot forms in a vein. They tend to occur in the deep veins of the leg, usually in the calf or thigh, and a DVT can block the flow of blood partially or completely. The signs and symptoms of a DVT are leg pain or tenderness, leg swelling, leg that is warm to touch, skin discoloration, which can be pale blue or reddish purple color. Alternatively, people can be asymptomatic with a DVT. They show no symptoms at all. A PE occurs when part of the clot from the DVT breaks off, circulates around the body and lodges in the pulmonary artery. A PE prevents gas exchange and impedes blood supply to the lung tissue. The signs and symptoms of a PE are shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, chest pain, rapid pulse, sweating, coughing up blood, sudden collapse. Some people can be asymptomatic with a PE. They show no symptoms at all. The number one safety issue for all hospitals remains hospital-associated thrombosis. Since VTE prevention measures were introduced by NHS England in 2010, there has been a 20.8% reduction in deaths within 90 days of hospital discharge. So what are the VTE prevention measures we can use at Oxford University Hospital Foundation Trust to help reduce the risk of developing a blood clot? When a patient over the age of 16 first arrives in our hospitals, the admitting doctor should complete a VTE risk assessment within six hours of admission and when the patient's clinical condition changes. The VTE risk. So I just stop it there because um, of time, but the video will go on to tell you about obviously the measures in place such as the pharmacological and mechanical thromboprophylaxis we use within the trust. So when you do have um, five minutes, do go on the Thrombosis UK website and find that video um, and, and, and watch the rest because it really is um, useful and it might give you ideas of how you could adapt it for your trust. So thank you for taking the time to listen on how we produced a staff educational video at Oxford. And I hope this has really inspired those who have thought about producing a video and just didn't quite know where to start. And to end, I would just like to thank all those involved in creating this video, which of course is all the stakeholders involved. But special thanks goes to my colleagues, Penny, Charlotte, Angeline and Nikki within the VT Prevention Service and Vicky, Lucy, Claire and Dahlia within the Anticoagulation Service. And lastly, Jim from OMI for putting up with my constant emails, times of panic and naivety. But it's not as simple as let's just make a video as you know, but it can be achieved and it is worthwhile with the key stakeholders involved with time, commitment and resilience. You really can do it. So thank you so much for listening. I'm going to stop sharing now and back to Bex. Thank you. Wow, Sarah, that is such a helpful presentation and such an impressive piece of work. Thank you. Um, if anyone has questions for any of our presenters, pop them in the chat, um, don't be shy, and uh, I or Joe will read them out, um, and um, as many as we can, please, please don't be backward in coming forward. Um, so I've got a few questions, Sarah, if that's okay. Yeah. 
I mean, I was surprised by the number of stakeholders involved. Um, I wonder, um, for you, where were the um, where were the unexpected challenges? Where was where was the sort of learning opportunity for you um, in this process? It really came right at the start where I had no idea. So I learned that it's not as simple as just making a video. You need advice from other people. And that's where I got in contact with Oxford um, Medical Ill Illustrations. And they were extremely helpful. And to get their contact, I just did a general um, look on our trust staff internet page of patient information and, and went to the contact page and found them and because they're an in-house resource I th felt they were better to use um, we did look outside as well but externally but actually I found having an in-house team was extremely helpful but it can be done either way mm. that was right at the start and then later on as I, I I've said it's I should have made expectations clear what, what they were to me and as a the video director and I wasn't really clear at the start that I was the video director it wasn't until I had conversations with Oxford um, Medical Illustrations when they said to me you are the video director you are the lead on this it's your yeah. decision it's not everyone else's but it was really hard because I wanted to make everyone happy and you've got to kind of draw the line somewhere. Mm. And I mean, I was drawing up a mental image or a mental list of the complicated stakeholders that wanted uh, script changes. I can imagine who they would be at our organisation. Um, so, yes, I wondered, I wonder if they're the same at your organisation, but we won't we won't go there, perhaps. Um, so, OK, so the so the filmmakers were were an in-house had experience of making healthcare videos and they had experience of making staff training videos. Um, so did they use actors? Is that they, presumably that's an actor speaking? Yeah. So um, firstly, we had to basically use a word document and write down word for word what we wanted to be said. That was then sent off to a script writer to ensure that the English was appropriate in a way yeah. and because having it on paper and then reading something out was very different yeah. and then from that point we then had this recorded so we had to pay for someone to talk mm. and then after that point this was where the expense was, was the artwork, the animation. And that's where we had to hire out a room and an artist come in and was videoed drawing all of the artwork of the video live. And then oh my joined all the dots together and that was the finished product. It's fascinating that in the world of TikTok and, you know, if you've got a, a camera phone, if you've got a smartphone, you can make a video, you can upload it. Um, everyone's a creator but actually this process is so different to standing with a camera in your hand or with a phone in your hand um, making content um, that's that's I have learned a lot from this session so thank you I'm going to consult the chat and see if if anybody else is um no nobody else is as curious as I am or perhaps yeah. they're being shy um, I just wondered finally if you've got any plans to publish your experience so if so whether in a sort of a, a, a practice share sharing good practice um if you've had any opportunity or if you have already um done that I'm sure there'd be an appetite for it yeah no thank you and it it'll be great to share further it's great to be invited here today to share my work um and locally we've done that as well but it would be great to go more outside to share with other trusts and please get in touch with me if you're thinking about developing a video within this um, speciality because I'm I'm very much happy to to help um, and I will be joining the round table after this session um, so if there's any questions I'm happy to answer them there as well great thank you um, a comment sorry no questions um, missed the start but I think your video looks fantastic 
but a lot of hard work that's from Louise so yeah I agree I mean gosh and when you boil it down to 10 minutes 20 minutes whatever it is and the number of hours you put in 120 hours that's such a significant amount of of time um, it was, I'm, sure, and... I'm sure you had other stuff to do as as well so well done and thank you thank you Sarah um do keep do keep adding questions to the chat and we'll get to them um, as part of either the discussion sort of ongoing throughout the presentation or, or afterwards in, in the chat room. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we're going to hear next 